Hey guys, so as you can see by the title, today we're going to be talking about the one move that the Celtics need to make to save their franchise and to save their future. So without further ado, let's get right into this video. Make sure to hit that subscribe button, turn on those post notifications, and also follow me up on Insta. I post all the sneak peeks, all the behind the scenes stuff you guys can be expecting, all the behind the scenes stuff on this channel. So without further ado, let's get right into this video. So as you can probably tell, the thing that the Boston Celtics have to do to save their franchise is trade for Anthony Davis. I know you guys might be thinking, but the Celtics can't trade for Anthony Davis till the summer, right? If they trade Kyrie, they can trade him now. It's so, like it goes by like the Rose Rule. You guys can look it up. I'm, I'll leave some links in the description to what the Rose Rule is, but I don't really know all the details. If they trade Kyrie, they can acquire Anthony Davis. Now, in the making of this video, the trade deadline is exactly. Not exactly, but 22 hours away. If the Celtics are going to have to do this, they have to get on it now. But yeah, I really do think this is going to be important. As we know at the beginning of the season, Kyrie Irving said that he would love to resign if they would have me. <laughs> and now he comes out a couple days and says, when a reporter asks, are you going to resign? He says, ask me July 1st. I'm going to do what's best for my family and my lifestyle or whatever. So things have obviously changed. If he was going to sign with the Boston Celtics and now he changed his mind, there's only one other thing that he could change. And it's not to sign with the Boston Celtics. If he says he's going to sign with the Boston Celtics, now he has a different answer. Either sign with the Celtics or another team. So if he has another answer then he's gonna sign with another team. It's just simple to me. Like, you're gonna change your answer up like that. That means you don't wanna sign with the Celtics again. I can just see that. Now let's move on to Anthony Davis. As we know, Anthony Davis requested a trade like a little bit more than a week ago. Dell Demps has been really careful with the trades that he makes. And especially with the Anthony Davis trade, I don't even wanna go over what the Lakers offered. We offered like, um, we offered our whole team besides LeBron plus, plus Staple Center plus Magic Johnson's house, um, Rob Palenka's suit, um, Jeannie Buss's dress. What the hell did you just say? Um, the Lakers practice facility were given to them too. Um, so the whole team plus all those amenities for Anthony Davis pretty much. And that's what we've been trying to do, but as we know, Dell Demps doesn't want to make a trade. So we know that he's been really careful and we know that Dell Demps isn't trying to trade for a bunch of young players that aren't certified superstars yet. You know, like as you can see in the back, like I'm, I'm a Laker fan, you know, I've been a Laker fan for a while. I've mentioned that in a lot of videos. Personally, the Lakers should definitely not trade for Anthony Davis. I'm too attached to the young players, I'm sorry. I don't want to see anybody go, okay? I don't want to see all these players go for Anthony Davis right now. Okay, just right now, just no. And I think it was good what Dell Dumps is doing. You know, he's being really careful with what trade he makes. He says he wants to wait to the sum because he wants to wait for the Celtics deal. But is there really a reason if they could make the trade now? The answer to that was like, no. Y'all should have said that like on your bed and watching this video. But you guys might be wondering. So Dell Dumps wants a superstar in return for Anthony Davis. Before y'all like go crazy, throw your popcorn at the door. I I'm not saying that they're gonna swap Kyrie for Anthony Davis. This is what I think the trade will look like. This is what I think is a reasonable trade for both teams and satisfied what both teams want. The Pelicans receive Kyrie Irving, Jason Tatum, Marcus Morris, and a 2019 second round pick. The Celtics receive Anthony Davis, Julius Randle. Now, let's just stop, all right? Let me go over the reasons why this trade should happen. Kyrie's not gonna stay. They need to get him out. The Celtics have been reported to want to chase Anthony Davis this offseason. If your superstar player does not want to play for your team and you have a chance to trade him away right now for one of the best players in the NBA, you go and do that. That's what the Celtics should try to do right now. They have to give him Jason Tatum in return, but for Christ's sake, it's, it's Anthony Davis, all right? And they're getting Julius Randle, a really good young player. I saw a hell of potential on the Lakers, but Luke Walton just didn't want to give him his chances, and we guess he just didn't want to resign. But you're getting him and Julius Randle, who only has one more year left in his contract after this year. But he's not like one of those players that you're just going to wait till his contract's up. He's a really valuable player to his team, averaging 20 points a season. As we know, Dell Dumps and the Pelican staff has been reported to really like Jason Tatum more than any of the Lakers' young players. I think that's BS, but you know, he's been reported to like Jason Tatum a lot. He wants a superstar player in return for Anthony Davis. Boom. There's a superstar player, Kyrie Irving. And he wants, he likes Jason Tatum. Boom. There's Jason Tatum. 
This makes so much sense for both teams. But what if Kyrie Irving leaves? Like, he might leave the organization, you know? The Pelicans aren't that big of a market team. He might want to go to the Knicks. I think if the Pelicans can make the playoffs and he gets a good bond with Drew Holiday, they could become a really special backport. Backport. They could become a really special backcourt, and Jason Tatum in there would really help them out. And I feel like he, there's a good chance of Kyrie staying if he is traded to the New Orleans Pelicans. But if he doesn't stay, which I will admit is very likely, you know, as I said, Pelicans are a big market team. The Knicks have been reported to want Kyrie. Then if he doesn't stay, then there's just and there's just cap relief for the New Orleans Pelicans, so they could sign a max free agent, you know. Jabari Parker and Bobby Portis to Washington? In the making of this video, Otto Porter just got traded to the Bulls for Jabari Parker and Bobby Portis. Yeah, so if Kyrie doesn't want to stay, then there's cap relief for them to sign another Max Free Agent, you know. Max Free Agents, you know, haven't been known for going to bad, not bad teams, but small market teams. But look, there's been a lot of things that have happened. Paul George re-signed with the Thunder. No one expected that to happen. And Oklahoma City is a very small market team. If the Pelicans get something going, which I really think is possible, then that might persuade Kyrie to rejoining the New Orleans Pelicans. So guys, that'll do it for this video. I really hope you enjoyed. Please do all that good stuff in the comments down below. Tell me your thoughts on this video. Question of the day. Do you think the Celtics should trade Kyrie Irving or try to persuade him back? into resigning with the Celtics. Personally, I think they should try to trade Kyrie because after what he said in the interview, that does not sound good and it doesn't sound like he's gonna resign under any circumstances. So make sure you guys go follow me on Instagram, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see y'all in the next one. Trade deadline's tomorrow. It's gonna be very spicy. See you guys next one.